I'm going to be planning a couple food plots. Oh, it is hot. It is 90, 90. 98 degrees. I shouldn't complain because like a month ago it was 50 degrees because Michigan's weird. I'm out at my grandparents right now. I'm going to be planning a couple food plots that are gonna be around my stands. If you guys want to get out and plant some food plots and you only have like a little small space, I'm gonna show you something that's like kind of like a little trick to do. It makes it really easy to plant in small areas and it's kind of a cheat because it will allow your crops to grow or your, your plot to grow even if the soil's bad. I'm gonna do that today. I'm just gonna make a very small one because I'm not, not actually gonna be hunting the area that I'm putting this, but I was thinking if I put this in the area, it might make them bed on my side of the fence this year instead of bedding on the other side of the fence, like all of last year, which was horrible. If you look out into this field, I mean, I have a huge food plot. I got a 68 acre food plot right beside my stand, but depending on you know the weather in the fall, it could be gone before the season even starts. It could be gone mid-October, it could be gone, I think they took it, finally took it down like the last week of October last year. So I'll have that first month, but after that, I don't have anything to bring the deer across the fence. They have the big pasture on the other side of the fence that doesn't get hunted, they're safe over there. It's harder for me to hunt, you know, because I can't get the big bucks that I'm trying to get to cross the fence to cross the fence. So this year what I'm doing is I'm planting just small food plots around my stands. They left a little bit of a patch on the edge of the field about four feet in three or four different areas and there's about one that's about six feet wide. And I've already sprayed the field. I don't have to worry about the farmer spraying my food plot, destroying what I have out. And so I'm going to be doing that today. I'm going to be planting these little food plots. I got some beets. <laughs> Let me show you. I got these biologic winter bulbs and beets and they are great for late season. So they're great for all season, but mainly in the late season, after the weather gets really cold and the snow gets cold, they like to dig them up out of the ground. That's when they taste the best to them, I guess. That's what I've been told and what I've read and so on. Those are really good. Those are made by Biologic. You can get those at, I mean, you can get them at Tractor Supply, any outdoor shop, Walmart even carries them. And then I got this no plow. And even though I'm going to tear up the ground a little bit, with this stuff, you actually don't need to. You're supposed to plant this in June or August. It's July, but we're supposed to have four days of rain nonstop. And that's the main reason they say don't plant in July because a lot of times it doesn't rain in a lot of places. We've actually been getting a lot of rain and we're about to have a storm in the next couple hours, which is why I'm out here right now hoping to plant this so that they get watered instantly and they'll start to sprout. And then the next five days, they should be getting a lot of water plus a lot of warmth from the July month weather. This is the No Plow by Whitetail Institute. I mean, anybody that hunts, I know you guys already know what these products are. I'm sure you know what these products are, but anybody that is new to hunting, this is a great thing because you don't have to do a lot of prep work. Find an area, rake the ground so that there's at least bare ground. You don't want to try to throw it on a bunch of leaves. It's not going to work like that. And then just spread it out. You know, if you want to do some extra steps, I'm going to show you those extra steps here in a little bit. But I gotta get out there because the storm's supposed to be here in about two hours, so I need to hurry up and get this done. Now, I'm going to be going right along this field line here. It's about three feet of space. This is the rototiller I'm using. It actually does a lot more damage than it looks. It's really starting to get hot. I mean, obviously I'm exercising, but the sun is just right at one o'clock and it is hot. In hunting tradition, I'm gonna throw on my hunting mask from Volk. These guys, they've hooked me up with these masks and I use them all the time. I use them when I'm working, not just when I'm hunting, having fun time. They keep the sun off my skin and they keep me cool when I'm in the water. The dust keeps flying up in my face, so it's another reason I'm gonna throw this on. So stay protected, people. Luckily, I have a bad back because if I didn't already, it would have been broken now. I don't think this is made to do like such a big space, that aspect. We're gonna do a little test. I'm gonna throw some of the no plow here where, it's, where I broke the ground up. I'm gonna throw a little no plow right behind you and I didn't break the ground, but it has been rounded up. So all the weeds and everything trying to grow is dead right now. They run it up about a week ago, so I should be safe to be able to plant right now. And I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let the seeds sit, see how they grow, and hopefully we get some a decent little plot right here to the corner. 
I got my workout for today. When you're playing small plots like around the field or in the woods, but you have a limited space that you want to get to, I highly recommend using like a hand spreader. So that way you can easily direct the way that the seeds are being spreaded. You know, when you have bigger plots, you can use, you know, the push, push spreaders or whatever. But when you leave your spreader at the office that's 15 miles away and you don't feel like going and getting it, the old Folgers can is always a trusty spreader. Seriously, I recommend some kind of spreader. It's going to be spread a lot more evenly. I'm about to pass out, man. This has been a workout. I haven't eaten 19 hours. Hopefully grandma's got something good cooking. Why didn't I do this when it was 50 degrees? Without a spreader, it really goes uneven. So to fix that, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rake over where I spread everything. So if you look behind me here, you can see that the farmer, or at least John Deere's GPS, so gracefully left, left me this 10 to 12 feet here on the edge of the field, between the edge of the field and the fence row. So I'm just gonna plant that and just leave it be. It's about the rain, the clouds are really starting to come in now. I'm gonna get this done real quick. I'm definitely gonna have to buy some more and bring them out here. It's supposed to be enough, but when you don't have a real spreader, you're just putting a bunch of beets beside each other. I should've just threw them all. Even when you have a situation like this where the farmer leaves extra space, if it's not your property or whatnot, definitely get your perm the permission of the landowner or of the farmer uh, to do something like this. I had the permission of the landowner. So the other thing too is it is tilled and stuff like that. They recommend that you drill these. So I don't have anything to drill them with. Like me, I just threw them on the ground, but this is a key ingredient right here. So you gotta use a rake to cover them. It's gonna protect them from the sun so they don't get burnt before the water gets them into the ground. So I gotta go do that. Are you waiting on me? Thought so. So a couple things are coming into play. One, I was looking on the radar, it's not looking good. Two, I'm dying. Three, So hot, I can't even think. Three, I'm out of seed anyway. Four, I gotta get this out. Without having a spreader, I didn't really get to spread it properly, therefore I used too much. I'll just go pick up another bag. That stuff's pretty inexpensive, so hopefully my wife won't kill me for getting seed for animals. So I'm gonna be back tomorrow. I gotta come out here anyway, because I have to drop my, my kids are gonna stay the night out here tomorrow, so it doesn't really matter. One day isn't gonna make a bit of difference. Honestly, we got about between two weeks and a month, depending on what you're planning, you know, to get it in and really get enough growth to where it can be effective during your deer season. I say this information mainly because there are a lot of people that are just getting into hunting and we need more people getting into hunting. There's a, oh, there's, there's a lot of, ah, I didn't salt my, eye. I mean, sweat, but uh, there's a lot more, you know, young kids out here doing these things, watching YouTube. So this is more information for people that are wanting to learn. And if you're an expert and I'm doing something wrong, ask, absolutely tell me I'm doing something wrong because one, it's gonna help other people that watch my videos, they read the comments and so on. Two, I wanna get better at this too. So I'm just not out here putting a bunch of bull crap you know, on the internet for people to watch and misleading. If it isn't raining, I'll be back in about 24 hours. If it is raining, I'll be back in 48 hours. So thanks for watching. I don't know why I'm saying this already. See you on the next clip. Sorry about the background noise. I got my rototiller working today. We're gonna go and finish up what we started, what I started the other day. It was two days since I last filmed. We had thunderstorms and rain right after I got finished planting, then the whole next day it rained. So it should work out pretty well for us. Well, I'm gonna go put this pull behind rototiller that I bought on somebody on Craigslist. It's basically, it was a three point hitch that connected to a Craftsman lawnmower. Me and my uncle converted it to be a pull behind. It's pretty much overkill if you really look at it, but I wanted to make it so that I can take it to the UP and pull it through the woods and not drag the tillers on the ground. Anybody knows where I can get new tillers at? I tried to look all over the internet. If anybody knows where I can get new tillers at, please leave a comment down below. I'd really like to get new tillers for it. There's a couple teeth that are broken off and so on.
tomorrow. Why? Because I did this Saturday. Yeah, but my back was still sore. Some of you might think it's weird that I'm playing in a food plot right beside a field, but if you go back and watch my deer hunting playlist from last year, you'll see why I need to get some food plots in here because once these beans are gone, there's no reason for the deer to come over here. And they do come over, but the bucks that I'm after do not come over. Ethan's tired. Yeah. He doesn't work this hard in the city. So as you can see, some of this is actually starting to sprout already. And I just planted this Saturday. So all that rain really helped out and then we got heat. So a couple days, this should be all green. I'll do an update later. I'm not gonna put it in this video because I wanna get this video out as soon as possible. So that if anybody doesn't know how to plant food plots, they can watch this and maybe learn, maybe learn something. I'm gonna do a little experiment real quick. I'm gonna tear this up with the rototiller on half. So we got, looks like about a, a four by four square and I'm gonna make another four by four square with the rototiller. And we'll see if it makes a really big difference in how this grows. We're gonna spread it the same. We're gonna cover it with the topsoil the same. And then we're gonna just see how it grows different. The topsoil will give it the, the nutrients and the, the fertilizer and stuff to grow just like you know a plant that you have in the house. So you can use potting soil, topsoil, whatever you want to use, just get it covered and it will grow pretty much anywhere. You won't get huge monsters, plants or whatnot like you would in an open field, but you're still going to get something to bring your deer by your stand. And it's something you might be able to do, you know, on, on public land. I don't know the rules about public land, so, you know, look up, see if you're allowed to plant anything there. But these would be small areas. I'm talking like six by six or, you know, 10 by six or whatever. Very small areas. You can go in with a rake, pull you and a friend, a couple bags of topsoil and some seed. And that's all you need. You don't need to take in rototillers or anything like that. I'm just going to use the throw and grow stuff. You know, it claims that it'll grow anywhere, but when you have the topsoil on it, it's just gonna benefit it even more. It might not look like much, but I promise you it works. There's a store called Family Farm and Home. It's like Tractor Supply. They actually sell food plot seed by the pound. So you can literally go in there and get a, a half a scoop, you know, something that would just cover a, a 10 by 10 area instead of having to buy an entire bag. And the seed really doesn't last as long as it should. You know, you might be able to use a bag of seed for a year or two. I'm gonna come back in a couple days and I'm gonna show you guys the food plots after they've matured a little bit. And then I did get the rototiller working. It's a pulley and a belt tensioner that makes it so that the rototiller actually turns. So I did get that part ordered, but it's not here yet. So I am gonna finish up the food plot. When I do that, I will show you guys what has grown so far. So I'll tell you exactly how many days it's been and how well it's grown. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll try to answer it the best I can. Hit that like button, subscribe. I gotta go.